everyone doing tonight? Uh, we're going to continue yesterday's theme, riveting, and we're going to learn about all about tube riveting today. Are you excited? I am. Say hi if you're watching. Let me know if you're uh, watching me live. Hi Catwoman, welcome back. Hi Al. I see some familiar faces. Hey. Um, I'm going to show... Hi Bonnie. Hi, 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 hi. Who needs a massage? I do. It's like after all of this uh demoing every day is like my shoulders starting to cramp up a little bit Ugh. hi greg greg is watching live in vermont hi i don't know why my screen here is not showing up so uh I'm going to refresh my browser. I don't know why there is no preview. So I, if I don't fresh it, uh, refresh it, I might not know if the camera got stuck again like a uh, couple of nights ago. Hi Namir. I'll be back in a bit. I'll try to refresh my thing here. Or maybe I'll open a new window. Let's see. I don't know what's wrong with it. Let's hope the new window will uh, show my live uh, screen on my laptop here. Well, I'm just gonna go over like uh, the stuff that you will need to uh, do a successful tube riveting tube rivet uh, this is uh, such a useful tool I would suggest that you make a purchase of a miter vise this is a miter vise and mine is just uh, not the super economy one but it's still an economy one from Rio Grande, I think it's about $65 to $75. I'm not sure what's the price right now, but when I bought it, it was $65. It has three different slots. Let's see. So this one is 90 degrees can cut 90 degree angle on it the first one and then I think the second one is like 135 and the, this one is 45 so this is useful if you ever need to join your metal in such a precision way and it's also uh, great for cutting tubes Uh, you want like for tip riveting you I wouldn't suggest using the uh, what is it? the minor cutoff saw the small thing from Harper Freight because that thing cannot cut like straight off so and this is the This one is the result of the cut from the cutoff saw, the mini cutoff saw from Harper Freight. You can see it's kind of like chewed up. I mean, it can cut, it's not great for small tubing like this one. Like the 4 millimeter one, it can cut kind of better. I'm not sure why for the 3 millimeter ones, it just seems like get stuck a little. So. 
I had to like turn it over and so you can see the result is not great. Well this end is cut with a miter saw and it's completely flush. So you will need a miter saw and a saw frame, a tourer saw. This is my saw. This is just a five millimeter, not five, five inches jaw with a cam lever from New Concepts. And I have a sawing tutorial in my YouTube channel if you need uh, some guidance. It's quite a com comprehensive tutorial. I have a full version and I also have uh, one that I already cut into three sections so it's like more focused so you can choose whichever if maybe if you would like to learn in chunks then uh, watch the one that's on in three section if you want to watch everything in one go it's 18 minutes it's the full version is 18 minutes Greg say I have done a few of the copper tube bracelets you taught Yay! I'm glad that you like that tutorial. You should show us like how your the bracelets that you made. I think that would be awesome. If only like you, this thing can be two ways, you know, like you can show me what you made and I can show you what I made. I think that would be awesome. So anyway, miter saw and saw frame. Like whatever uh, saw that you have, doesn't matter as long as it's a drawer saw and not, you know, like woodworking saw because that wouldn't work. To cut tubing, you need uh, the blade. The blade can be, because it's, it's quite thick. So you can use either like 4, 4 slash 0, or I think two slash zero might still work. It's not too thick. The one that I installed on mine is six 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 slash zero. I happen to like uh, working with this size because I do a lot of intricate uh, piercing. But if you don't do intricate piercings, you can just use four or. 4 slash 0 or 2 slash 0. Man, those, those numbers are really hard to say, like, right? 2 slash 0. It's like, can you make like a better numbering? Like, okay, so those are the tools that you need. And then the next one, of course, you need a metal. Uh, this is just scrap metal that I will use to show you how to to rivet and then just like a scrap uh, credit card old credit card that I already drilled a hole in the same size of the one that I'm going to rivet and there there is a reason for that and I will show it later and can, you will also need a divider or anything sharp or you can also use something like sharpie to mark where you want the tubing to be cut and then you will need some gapping punches this is to flare out the tube So okay, let's get started. Oh, you will need to drill a hole, right? Because like tubing is a lot, a lot thicker than just wire, like riveting yesterday. So you want to drill a hole in the size that is in the same size of your tubing. So let's see, this is yesterday we already measured this thing, but for 
could measure, let's just do this again. So this is about almost three millimeter. Um, tubing, the outside diameter. So you will, ni you will need to find a drill bit that is similar in size This one is a little too small. It was like 2.8 something, right? So let's go to the next one. Okay, this one should be okay. It's three millimeter. So if you, uh, because this is such a big um, drill, drill hole, you don't want to use this straight ahead to your metal. You want to drill a pilot hole probably around like 18 gauge, you know, one millimeter uh, diameter first to drill your metal because usually it wouldn't go in well enough if you just like drill a thin metal like this 24 gauge with straight with a three millimeter one. So you want to drill a pilot hole or you can use the hole punches. That's usually pretty small hole or the helicopter one. Anything that makes a hole, smaller hole first and then you drill it to the size of the tubing. So make sure like you go gradually. It's okay usually if you have a pilot hole uh, for like one millimeter one or 1.2 millimeter and then you go straight to the three millimeter would be fine and when you're drilling it I would suggest you have some kind of a protection um, I like to use uh, this leather uh, finger guard or you can use uh, whatever that's the the alligator tape or something like that because when you're drilling metal it can be hot especially like it's such a small piece right when you're holding it down you will feel it uh, on your skin so either you tape the metal down or you wear something uh, like this something to protect your finger from burning So I have, I'm not here to show you how to drill metal, I actually have a, a demo on my Facebook page for my uh, drill back there, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a I've, I showed it yesterday, it's a mini drill press so there you go I already drilled my metal so I'm going to show you how to uh, tube rivet okay let's get started point this to my desk uh, my stump on the light. So here's how you measure your tubing to the right side. So yesterday we learned about that you need about one millimeter above the metal to rivet with the regular uh, rivet, like the nail rivet or however, whatever you call it. And since like this is a tubing, we need to flare out both sides, right? And so you need like approximately one millimeter on this side and then one millimeter on this side. And to make it a lot simpler, uh, this is where the credit card come in. So like I've uh, shown you before, I already drilled 
holes all the same size so I'm going to thread my tubing uh, credit card and then metal and then credit card so now you know uh, where do you need to cut your tubing right it's pretty simple you make the back flush to the credit card and then you want to mark it where the credit card uh, ends over here. So this is why like you need something sharp like this divider. Uh, so like you can like uh, mark it like that, right? And then you will see that your metal is, uh, there's a scratch on your metal from scratching it or you can also do this to make it a lot simpler if you have uh, the miter vise so you can thread it uh, credit card and then metal word position for me because I am not on my bench pin but it will have to do. So first you lubricate your saw blade. I just use like regular candle. You can all you can use whatever lubricant you want. I just have happen to have candles so that's what I use. You can also use a beast wax and stuff like that. So you want to make sure when you saw this that your finger is not over uh, the miter saw, right? Because it's going to cut your finger. So make sure it's behind uh, the behind the, this part, right, when you're sawing it. So when I'm sawing a tubing, I like to like saw it from two sides like this part first and then like I usually go from the side a little bit I don't know it's just something that I do you can definitely cut like straight through whatever you like just make sure to be mindful about where your fingers are you want to be like really careful because Oh, there you go. Now it's gone. It's gone. Now I have to find it. Or I can just cut one more because, you know, it's virtually impossible to find on my floor. So there you go. I guess I will have to cut one more even though I have already pretty, pretty careful about sawing it. this out again and measure it again right, measure it make sure it's on the right uh, right in fasten it Okay, let's uh, second try. 
Luke, my saw plate again. And now, sorry. Now let's hope this one doesn't like uh, jump off. Let me see if I can find a small, small case. Maybe that would uh, capture the thing. Let's see if this, if this idea works. Usual, be mindful where your fingers are. Make sure you don't cut your fingers while doing this. Yeah, I'll just do this. Pretty awkward. Then a crimp tube, you know, like the for the the crimping uh, the end of a cord or string. You can also use that because they usually seamless tube, right? So let's try uh, to actually do it now. So you want to fit it inside the hole, like so. See if I can bring my camera a little closer. Let's hope it doesn't end up like, freezing out. I don't know why it doesn't want to go in. Catwoman say, I think they call them 2 OTT, 4 OTT. Is that for the blade? What's the OTT means? Colette say, Charisma, I love your videos. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Yay. I'm glad that you love it. So, you want to choose a tapping punch it's like bigger than the hole but not too big so it can go in the hole and flare it you also don't want to choose the one that's too small like this one is too small so this one will just go in like in my experience, when it's too small, it just kind of like a, you kind of make the tubing bigger, like it's, it will go inside, even though it doesn't seem like it, but when you hammer it, then suddenly you have the tube uh, stuck in your dapping punch because it goes inside instead of uh, flaring it out. So you want something that's uh, slightly bigger than that. Uh, to help you flat out the tube. Okay, let's see. I hope it, it is clear on the camera. So I'm gonna use my copper hammer. Like so. Kinda want to like uh, 
turn around a little bit. Sometimes you kind of uh, flat it to one side, so it's kind of like curved to one side, so you want to kind of turn it around a little, and then check when it's okay. This one is flat enough; it can not slide down. And by this time, you kind of like half flat it. You don't flat it all the way. You want to flip it and do the other side, so you know it can be even both sides you're not like over flared one side
That's super easy, right? That's not hard at all. You just have, you just need to practice on the uh, cutting the tubing and then let it out uh, so it's even on both sides. Now tube rivet is great for accents and it's also great to uh, decorate your holes if you want to attach a chain or a cord like if you make it bigger, you can attach leather cord to it and it will make a nice smooth uh, edging so your leather cord is not cut by the metal. So it just make it thicker and like smoother because you know the, the, the inside of uh, the tube makes a soft uh, curve instead of you know like a straight edge like just the metal. So. It makes a good uh, hole for leather cord or chain and whatnot. So what do you think of this? Like, uh, do you want me to demonstrate another one? I already have one. Let's see if we can do this on kind of like a tight place where you already have a uh, decoration on it. This is the, the one that we, we did yesterday, uh, the regular rivet. And now let's see if we can add a tube rivet on it. I kind of already like flared it halfway down. Try on this one. It's kind of tricky when you already have a uh, volume over here, like thickness, so it can't. Uh, lay straight. So I think for tube rivet, it's better that you do it uh, first before you add anything else. But you can put it on the side of your uh, steel block, like so, so it can lay a little flatter than if you have everything on the steel block. That's what I'm going to do when I'm flaring out the other side. Let's see, put a little window so you can see it. So it's a little uh, tricky because you need to move it around your steel block here because you can't easily uh, just rotate it that way so you need to put it on the different side of the steel block to make sure that you flare it out uh, evenly I'm going to move to the next side Basically it, you just need to practice on the flaring. You can also use uh, the cross beam part to help uh, further flaring it out. I mean, if you like the texture. Make sure I am on camera and I can also do 
to round. It's not going to be perfect because, you know, it's awkward for me. because I cannot uh, move it around uh, as freely because I am on camera. But you can see it creates a nice uh, texture with a small cross beam, the riveting hammer. So you don't need a heavy hammer for riveting because it's such a small of metal to move. That's why a riveting hammer is usually pretty small. So there you have it, like a few ways to make the rivet. Like you can you can try to flatten it out first before you texture it just to make sure like everything is flat. such a nice organic look you know it's not uh, the perfect circle but it has some kind of a uh, like old world rustic look to it that's a marketing uh, word for you know uneven right <laughs> you just say old world rustic uh, look Totally, uh, totally intentional. <laughs> odd. Amy say I think it's odd for zero. I'm not sure what odd means. Odd. Oh, the O T T is it like read as odd? Too odd, uh, for odd like that. Huh, such a weird word. I learned something new today. So, what do you guys think of uh, tube riveting? Is it easy? Is it hard? So, like, uh, like I said, you can use this to string, uh, to add some little interest to your the design. Uh, let's see if I, I want to make. I want to make a little uh, link for this thing. So let's see, this is just uh, the wire that we used the other night. Falling, falling wire. There you go, that's the video. So I'm going to make sure I have enough clearance. So I think this one would be okay.
going to slide this in. Oh, just want to make sure that if before you do anything with it, make sure you sand it first. So it's like smoother. Pretty usual. Sanding is important. So make sure you sand it like all the way around and not just the one direction. And then you can feel it. See if it's going to sand it nicely. Okay. So now I'm going to string this like so. Catwoman is asking, what is the sandpaper you use again? Uh, it's the 3M plastic backing sandpaper. This one is just 150 grit. You can get it from Home Depot or Lowe's. And they have uh, different sizes, but the one that I could find in Home Depot was uh, the finest was 150. I haven't checked online yet if I could get anything finer than 150. But this one lasts forever because it's plastic. Basically, doesn't uh, tear up like the paper one. So you can use it like for as long as you can, as long as like a uh, it's still uh, rough. You can use it. So it's like I think it's very economical and you know you don't waste a lot of sandpaper. I really like uh, the sandpaper. But if you cannot find it, just line your sandpaper with duct tape before you cut it to size, like cover all over it with duct tape. And that's what I have done with my sandpaper in the past before I found this one. You can like uh, stretch it out and it doesn't uh, tear up. It's a pretty cool sandpaper. It's thin but it's very uh, strong. So that is how you do tip rivet. Let me know if the instruction was clear or not, and if I should do one more. Let me know in the comment. What do you? Uh, what are you going to make with uh, that involves tube riveting? Do you already have some ideas?
So do you have already have some ideas how you can incorporate uh, tube riveting in your pieces? I like it a lot. I I don't know why I don't use it enough, but I I've I've done a few with the uh, tube riveting and I really like it. And hoping that in the future I will put more into my pieces. So how do you say it? Is it like a two slash odd or two odd? No, oh, Amy. For the set, uh, for the saw plate, is it like the one that's like two slash zero? Is it like two odd, two odd or two slash odd? I'm a little confused. So I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know all any old English words. Uh, so maybe die. Uh, I haven't even read Romeo and Juliet. Uh, it, it was not a requirement in my school because I didn't go to school in the U.S. So. Okay, so Catwoman say it's too odd. Okay, I will remember it. It's too odd for odd such a weird word but well if there is no more questions I will end tonight's uh, video and maybe get some massage or something I really could use it my shoulder is like starting to cramp up a little this is why you need to work out like do some stretching on your shoulders before and after you work. So you and posture is really important. So you need to make sure you have a good posture when you're making anything, so you don't injure yourself, your shoulder. Having having good shoulder is important for us metal smiths. You know, you do something like that. Do some of the neck uh, cranking. My I can't move my neck much because I actually like injured my left shoulder yesterday. I think it was from making the micro uh, copper. Uh, the, this one because I was doing like in such odd angles. So yeah, posture is important. Make sure you have a good height for your desk for everything so that's just so you don't injure yourself like me <laughs> well I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, for tomorrow uh, shoot I kind of kind of forgot what was that gonna be? oh for tomorrow I'm gonna do fault forming uh, fault forming uh, I think I'm gonna do something simple like the leaf or the corrugating one. I will decide it tonight, but tomorrow's topic gonna be full for me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for watching and spend time with me. I really appreciate it. Bye. Mm -hmm.